Praise the Lord. Et basi. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless your name tonight. We thank you because we are gathered here for something great. Something wonderful. Something unforgettable. And you are going to confirm it in every life tonight in Jesus' name. You have started working already. And we pray that before we finish, everyone will see the accomplishment of your power in their lives in Jesus name. Save your people tonight. Heal your people tonight. Deliver your people tonight. Set everyone free. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus name we pray. Give me another good amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we come to the scriptures. And I'm reading to you from Luke chapter 5. What verse of scripture there? In verse 17. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. We're gathered here tonight because of the Lord. Because that Jesus we have been hearing about is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. What you did before you see going to do today is by your side right there. He will manifest his power in your life. In Luke chapter 5, verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day. As he was teaching. That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Listen to this. Pay attention. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. As you look at that verse, it said it came to pass. It's coming to pass in your life tonight. Every desire you have, every promise you are holding on to, there's going to be a fulfillment tonight. It came to pass, it's going to come to pass. Don't leave that place. The power of the Lord will be coming your way. And something must happen. And it says, on a certain day, what a day we're living in today. The day when God is still working. The day when God himself is operating is the day of the Lord himself. The day of the Almighty. The day of his power. And the day of his proclamation. It says it came to pass on that certain day. He was teaching there. Giving instruction. And everything you are going to hear tonight is what Christ himself is saying. He's passing it through me to get to you. And as his word gets to you tonight, what does will follow. Salvation will follow. Healing will follow. Deliverance will follow. Am I talking to somebody there? Let that person say Amen. Amen. Because it tells us where Christ is, there must be the manifestation of his power. And then it tells us all the people that were there. And that verse finishes by saying, and the power of the Lord was present. Present to do whatever the people needed to be done. Present to say, Present to heal. Present to deliver. Present to set free. The power is there tonight. Anywhere you are, as the word of power is coming to you, its wonders will follow. Its salvation will follow. And every good thing you desire will follow tonight in the name of Jesus. The power of the Lord was present to save. Present to heal. 
was present to deliver, was present to do everything that needs to be done in the lives of the people. Tonight, as I look at that verse, I'm talking to you on the unforgettable day of full salvation. The unforgettable day of full salvation. This is that day. Tonight will be the time of that manifestation of the power of the Lord in your life. Say my life. Say in my life. Today is the day of the manifestation of his power. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For he says, I have heard thee in the time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee. In the day of salvation have I supported thee? In the day of salvation have I sustained thee? Behold, now is the accepted time. When is the accepted time the Lord is going to bless you? When is he going to save you? When is he going to heal you? When is he going to deliver you? He says, behold, now is the accepted time. He says, behold, now is the day of salvation. Your salvation. Your healing, your deliverance, your miracle. Behold, this is the day, the unforgettable day of full salvation. As we come back to Luke chapter 5, I'm going to look at the story that follows that verse 17 I read to you now. And as you look at the story, you will see your own life over here. And you will see how God is going to help you. How he's going to roll your problem away. Because what he has done for another is going to do for you. It says in chapter 5 of Luke verse 18. It says, and behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken was a palsy. Paralyzed, impotent, weak, and could not support himself because was taken with a palsy. And they sought means to bring him in. And to lay him before him. That is to lay the man before the Lord. And when they could not find what to do, what way they might bring him in. Because of the multitude, they went upon the house top. And let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. All that needs to happen to you tonight is to come in presence in the presence of Christ. And you believe that in your mind, in your heart. I am in the presence of the Lord. And everything will be all right in your life. And when he was in the presence of Jesus, verse 20 says, and when he saw their face. He said unto him, Man, thy sins be forgiven thee. And then the story goes on until verse 24. And then goes on till verse 25. Because Jesus said in verse 24, the latter part, Arise, take up thy coach, and go back, and go eat to thine house. And immediately he arose before them. Take up that couch. 
Aben Take up your bed. Aben Take up that siege. You couldn't walk before. But power is coming upon your life. And when Jesus said that, Jesus immediately the man arose. As I look at the story of this man, I see your picture here. And I see the promise of God for you here. And I see the power of God for you here. And I can tell what is going to happen to you tonight. Something good is going to happen to you. What are you there? I said something good is going to happen to you. Look at the man we are talking about. And look at yourself as I'm talking about you. Number one, the helplessness. Look at the man they carried in. I see the helpless posture. The man was totally impotent, totally paralyzed. He couldn't do anything at all. He couldn't move at all. Number one is a helplessness. Number two, as I look at the story, I see the hour. The hour of something good happening. And this is your hour. I know this is my hour. Where are you? I said, this is your hour. Number three, I see the healing. The healing. Number one, the helplessness of every sinner without salvation. The man had never met Christ. He was suffering all alone. He didn't know God. He didn't know his creator. He didn't know the helper. He didn't know the healer. He didn't know the savior. And he was going from bad to worse. Deteriorating. And there wasn't any help coming until he was totally grounded. What's the situation today? What has happened to you till this time? That has said, Hell, somebody there, help me. And help had not come. The helplessness of every sinner without salvation. No, but you praise the Lord. I see number two, the hour of your salvation from all sins. This is your hour. This is the hour of my salvation. It will come to you. Number three, the healing of the sick by the Savior. The healing of the sick by the Savior. Tonight is the night of your healing. It will happen. I said it will happen. I hear your shout of joy. I hear your testimony. And I know things are going to turn around tonight for you. Number one, let's look at the man. The helplessness of every sinner without salvation. I read the story to you already. In verse 13, it says the man was carried on a bed. He couldn't stand. There are many people in the world, they cannot stand. They cannot stand for any conviction. They cannot stand for any purpose. They cannot stand on a principle. They are like this and like that. They wobble. They are paralyzed. In their soul, they are paralyzed. In their mind, they are paralyzed. In their intelligence, they are paralyzed. In their thinking, they are paralyzed. You couldn't trust them to stand. No principle. And there is no character. And there is no life that is good. The man couldn't stand. And the man couldn't walk. He was totally paralyzed. Impotent. There were people. They cannot walk straight. They cannot talk straight. They cannot act straight. They cannot live straight. Because they are totally helpless. Once in a while, you say, today I'm going to stand. But you cannot. Because an empty bag cannot stand upright. You must feel that bag was something. Before you can make that bag to stand. But if the bag is totally empty. Might have a good color. 
might have good texture. You might even paint it. You might wash it. You might dry clean it. As long as that bag is empty, it will not stand. There are people in this life. In fact, it's like everybody in life. Until you are filled with something good. And Christ comes into you. And he takes over your life. There's no way you'll be able to stand. Until it comes to you, you will not be able to walk in the life of righteousness. Let me go to church. Take that empty back to church. Let it stand. Empty back cannot stand without something filling it. And you might go for whatever program. As long as the bag is empty, the empty bag cannot stand. How many times do we make resolutions? I will not do that again. I will not go there again. I will not say that thing again. And if anybody comes and she tells me this is the way to go, if I know that thing is wrong, I make up my mind today. I am resolute and determined today. I will not. And then eventually the test comes. And then you remind yourself. You remind, you remember what you said. Uh, yes, but you know, at this time, I don't know what's happening to me now. The man has no inner strength. That woman has no inner strength. Because of the helplessness of every sinner without salvation. Let me read the story to you. It's in Romans chapter 7 verse 15. It says, for that which I do, I allow not. That which I do, I allow not. Remember the man I'm talking about? He was carried on the bed. If he wanted to go to the toilet, and there was nobody around, there is no help, nobody to take him, he'll, do, he'll mess up there. And you come and you say, What's smelling here? What's happening here? He it said, it's me. Because I didn't want to do that. That which I do, I allow not. For what I would, I do not. He said, I want to get up. I want to go and do it in a very good place. I have the decision. I have the determination. I have the desire. But what can I do? I am helpless. What happened to that man in the physical? Happens to everyone in the spiritual. Happens to everyone in the moral life. He says, but what I hate that I do. How many people are living their lives like that? I don't want to do this. I don't want to go that direction. I hate this. I detest this. I don't want this kind of character. Until the Savior comes to you, you will be totally helpless. Then you said in verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, if then I do that which I do that which I would not, if all my decisions just go down, go down the drain, all my determination goes down the drain. If I do that, I would not. I consent to the Lord that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me because of the sin that dwells in the man that that makes him powerless makes him impotent makes him not to have any backbone cannot stand straight cannot walk straight in the market he'll tell a lie in the office he'll tell a lie anywhere he goes he'll misbehave he cannot walk the way of righteousness he no sit in the head. He no sit in the mind. He might even repeat all the Ten Commandments. But how to do that? He does not have the power. The helplessness of the sinner without salvation. That's why tonight, Christ is going to help you. 
Somebody there tonight has said Christ is going to help you. Your help has come. Your salvation has come. His name is Jesus. When you turn away from your sin and you confess, Lord, here am I. This is who I am. The way I wanted to walk, I could not. The things I wanted to do, I could not. And what I wanted to stand on, I could not. I, I wanted to be a man of principle. A woman of principle. But Lord, look at me. The helplessness of the sinner without salvation. I, I know there are people that will say, I am saved. And they will use another language. I am born again. And they say, I'm a church man. I'm a church woman. But you know how we will know whether you are right or wrong. When you don't have feet to stand, mind to stand, strength to stand, backbone to stand, you don't have any principle. You don't say, that is where I am going. And you get there. When you are at the mercy of society, at the mercy of people, you are like this, like that. And you are not a man of the word of God that can stand on that word. Whatever decisions are making, you cannot stand by it because the salvation is yet to come. Thank God tonight salvation has come. Somebody there says thank God tonight salvation has come. Where are you? I say salvation has come. And look at verse 18 of that uh, of that chapter 7. So remember my friend, uh, it says, For I know that in me that he is in my flesh. Do I let no good thing until the gospel enters there? Until the power of salvation enters there. Until the conviction. Now I belong to Christ and the Holy Ghost paints it in your mind. It says, there's no good thing dwelling in me. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not. For the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not. It is no more I that do it. But sin that dwells in me. That's the situation of everyone. But now you are going to allow Christ to come in. You don't have power to deal with that sin yourself. You don't have power to overcome that sin yourself. You don't have power to overcome the darkness yourself. But Christ will come in tonight. Somebody there said Christ will come in tonight. When Christ comes in, darkness will go out. When Christ comes in, all the crises will go out. When the Savior comes in, all the sins will come out. And tonight is that night. The night of your salvation. The night to allow the Savior to come in. Are you there? I said, are you there? Number two now. The hour of your salvation from all seeds. The hour of your salvation from all seeds. I'm reading the, in the story we're reading here. And it's in uh, chapter 5 of Luke. And I'm reading from verse 20 here. It says, when he saw their face. 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 Faith is demonstrated by action. Faith is demonstrated by what you say, what you do, how you are. They were bringing the man to Jesus. And there was a crowd. And they couldn't enter in. They didn't have faith. Let's look for an alternative. 
there are people that do not they say they know Jesus they don't have their faith in Jesus and Jesus alone they say okay if Jesus cannot do it we cannot get to him we're going for an alternative the people did not go for any alternative they knew that salvation is only in Christ help is only in Christ the power is only in Christ when he saw their faith, when it appeared, it was impossible. You see, there are people that think it's impossible. I've been in this situation for a long time. The drunkenness, I tried to stop, I could not stop. Smoking all that marijuana, I tried to stop, I could not stop. I'm following the way of evil, I tried to stop, I could not stop. Maybe that's just my makeup. That's just my constitution. That's the way I was born. And there will be no change ever. They don't have faith that he who created the whole universe he can recreate you tonight. The Lord will create your life tonight. A new life will come. A righteous life will come. Those things have found impossible in the past. They're going to be possible from tonight. This mountain of helplessness will be removed tonight. And the mountain of guilt will be removed tonight. And that, you know, downcast attitude or downcast a kind of nature, everything is cancelled tonight. When they saw their faith, when they could not go through, they said, they could have said, okay, is Peter there? Is John there? John Abado. Is Mary there? Mary Abado. If we cannot get to Jesus, maybe we Jesus. can get to Peter. No, Peter. they said, no, there's no salvation in any other. For there is none other name given among men whereby we can be saved except the name of Jesus. They said, we came here for Jesus because he's Savior. We came here for Jesus because he's Redeemer. We came here for Jesus because he's a healer. We came here for Jesus because he's the deliverer. And he said, we must get a way to get to Jesus. And so they went on top of the house. You know, the man could have said, it's enough. I'm already feeling dizzy. Even the journey, the, the length from my house to this place, I'm feeling like I'm fainting. If you go to the top of the house and you drop me down, if the rope of this uh, couch, if it snaps, then I'm gone. Give me the way I am. Let me stay like that. No, the man said, do whatever you will do. Carry me up. Throw me down. Just land me in front of Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, if you make up your mind like that, and you say, I don't care how long it takes, I must get to Jesus tonight. Jesus will get to you tonight. I said, Jesus will get to you tonight. And you will be surprised. Wonder of all wonders. The wonder of forgiveness. The wonder of reconciliation with God. The wonder of salvation. Look at, look at that verse 20. When he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Thy sins are forgiven thee. The man got what, more than what he expected. The sins in the plural. Jesus has part to forgive. And he has the power to wipe all your sins away. And tonight shall manifest that power. He bundled all the sins together. Every evil sin you've done since you were born. Every sin you have committed since you were born. The little ones and the big ones. 
the occasional ones and the common ones. The ordinary ones and the extraordinary ones. The ones you did in the private, the ones you did in the public. The ones who are covered up before, the ones that are exposed. All disease bundled together. Salvation is available tonight. Somebody there says salvation is available tonight. He saw their faith. Faith in Christ. Faith in the Savior. Faith is the only one that can take your sins away. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can take the stain away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that Jesus is here tonight. What you or three are gathered in my name. What you thousand or three thousand are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Is there. I said your Savior is there. I said he is there. Let him see your faith tonight. That you don't have a face in any other thing. No face in wood. No face in iron. No face in stone. No face in darkness. No face in the river. No face in religion. No face in idol worship. No face on the other side of the sea. No face on the village man. No face in any other. But Jesus and Jesus alone. Jesus, Jesus. When you make him that Jesus and Jesus alone tonight. And you say, I'm looking up to you. You. you died for me on the cross of Calvary. When he sees that faith that is centered on him, when he sees that faith that is focused on him, your salvation has come tonight. I said your salvation has come tonight. Say, my salvation has come tonight. You will get it. Turn away from sin. The Savior will enter. Turn away from darkness. Light will come in. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apposles chapter 5. Verses 30 and 31. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 verses 30 and 31. It says the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. You don't hear that about any other man. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Not Augustine. Not Peter. Not John. Not Mary. Not Papa somewhere. Not Mama somewhere. Not oil. Not candle, not anything. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Who is you on hang on a tree? As God exalted. Him as God exalted. With his right hand. To be a prince and a savior. That's the appointment of the father. That's the anointing of the father. That is the choice of the father. The father raised him up. To be your prince. And to be your savior. And he says for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Yes, the one approved of the Heavenly Father that he will give you that repentance as well as forgiveness. Tonight, it will happen. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Receive him tonight. Welcome him tonight. Open the door of your heart to him tonight. Forgiveness has come. Good news, forgiveness has come. For the forgiveness, freedom has come. He will set you free. He will break the power of cancel sin. You will live right. I said you will live right. You become a new creature tonight. The creative power in salvation will come on your soul tonight. Say amen. Number three now, the healing of the sick by the Savior. Tonight is that night. I said tonight is your night. Look at this, verse 23 now. It says, whether it's easier to say, 
Aribo. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Or to say, rise up and walk. He said, there are two things here. And I've given the first one. I've said, your sins be forgiven you. I've said, receive freedom from sin. Receive a new life from me. Receive your salvation. And then he said, which one do you think is easier for me? To say, you are forgiven, or to say, rise up and walk. He said, it is equally easy for him. He gives salvation to everyone who asks, and you receive. He says, it's as easy that your healing will come. Your healing is available tonight. Then he says in verse 24, but that ye may know you will know tonight. You will sense it tonight. You will possess it tonight. For that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, I say unto thee, hold on, hold on. He didn't have to touch him. He didn't have to push him down. He didn't have to do any other thing. He didn't have to, you know, help him out physically. It is spiritual. And it is getting to you tonight. I'm sure you understand. Telephone. The wireless telephone. You are there. And then the other person you are talking to is over there. And there's no wire. There's no rod. There's nothing physical that connects you. And you speak over there. And through the air, through the open space, empty space, nothing gets to you. Do you think that man is greater than God? Wiser than God? More scientific than God? If man could send a message from here and get it there without any physical connection, don't you understand that the creator of the heavens and the earth he speaks the word here. He gives the healing here and sends it to you there. You are going to catch it tonight. You are going to receive it tonight. And so he said, I say unto thee, tonight as the proclamation of the healing comes to you, power comes of the world, anointing comes of the world, authority comes of the world. I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. Look at verse 25. And immediately. Somebody help me pronounce that word immediately. When is ice your miracle going to happen tonight? I said, is your healing going to happen tonight? I said, is your deliverance going to take place tonight? And immediately he arose up. He rose up before them. Tonight, before us here, those blind eyes will open. Tonight, before us here, that paralyzed person will rise up. Tonight, before us here, the deaf and the dumb, you will hear, you will speak. Tonight, all those things walking about in your body, everything will vanish away. Tonight, before us here, insanity, madness will vanish away. Tonight, before us here, that mountain you carry, heavy on your back, hunchback, everything will vanish away. It says, immediately, he rose up. Immediately, you will rise up. Power will come in your life. Because he sent his word. He sent his word. And healed them. And delivered them from all their oppression. Tonight, the word of power will come against your sickness. Against your infirmity. And it's the word of Christ. Coming through me. Getting to you there. Immediately tonight. I said immediately tonight. You 
will receive in Jesus' name. And immediately he rose up before them. And he took up the bed whereon he lay. And departed to his house glorifying God. And they were all amazed. The peace that will come to your heart tonight, you'll be amazed. The feeling and the sense of forgiveness that comes to you tonight, you'll be amazed. The joy of salvation that comes to you tonight, you'll be amazed. The freedom, the liberty that comes to you tonight, you'll be amazed. And they were all amazed. The healing that comes tonight, your deliverance that comes tonight, the freedom that comes tonight, joy has come for you. Excitement has come for you. Testimony is in your mouth already. And the glorified God and they glorified God and they were filled with fear saying we have seen strange things today. Today you will see something you have never seen. You will receive what you have never received. Help has come. What are you? Help has come. What are you? Forgiveness has come. What are you? Salvation has come. In fact, right now, you are, God is going to do something. I see God holding a pen in heaven. It's about to write somebody's name. There's a book in heaven. And only the people that have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, they're the people that their names get into that book of life. It's about to write now. I said it's about to write a name down. It's about to write a name down. And if you are there, I say, God, I am here. Write my, write my name. Write my name. Write my name. I come out of my sin. I come to Jesus. I make him my savior. Forgive my sin. Change my life. Give me the help tonight. Let this be moment of my salvation. The hour of my salvation. Your name is down in the book of life. I said your name. I said your name. Say my name. My name. My name. My name. We'll be reaching down in the book of life in heaven. And then after writing that name, he says, don't go yet. It will heal your sickness. It will deliver you from oppression. Are you ready? Heaven is ready. Are you ready? Jesus is ready to forgive. Are you ready? He's ready to save. Are you ready? Ready? I said, are you ready? It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to forgive you now. Because he must have a father appointed. That he will give repentance and forgiveness of sin. Whosoever will call upon him. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want that to happen to you right now. Salvation. Forgiveness. Redemption. And the writing of your name in the book of life in heaven. You say, yes, Lord, I'm the candidate for salvation. I want that forgiveness now. I want eternal life now. Anywhere you are, you raise up your hand. Hands, and let God see your hands. Let God see your hands. You make up your mind. And you say, Today, my forgiveness has come. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to joke with this opportunity. Salvation for me tonight. Forgiveness for me tonight. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. If you're raising up your hand, you will stand up. If you're raising up your hand, you will stand up. If you're raising up your hand, you will stand up. Salvation. Forgiveness. Reconciliation. Restoration. I want that tonight. I believe. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he procured my salvation. I believe he's giving me that salvation right now. And while you are raising up your hands, and while you are standing, tell him, tell him, tell him, Lord, I believe tonight. Lord, I believe tonight. I have been powerless before, helpless before, but now my salvation has come. I receive that salvation. I receive that salvation. Tell him, tell him, tell him. I receive your forgiveness now. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was precious in your sight. And you died for me. Lord, I thank you. I am saved. I am forgiven. I'm not going to turn to any other alternative. You and you alone. You and you alone. You and you alone. Will ever, forever be my Savior. I turn over my life unto you. Let him come in. And then take back and not stand upright. Let him come in. Religion alone is not enough. Let him come in. Good works not alone. Let him come in. All those rituals, church ceremonies, they are not enough. Let him come in. Baptism, name infant baptism, not enough. Let him come in. Come in, Lord. Come in today. Come in to stay. Be my savior. I accept that law. I receive that law. And that salvation is there right now. I'm going to pray with you now. Keep up your hand. Keep up your hand while you're standing up. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for all those who have sincerely given themselves to Christ. And they receive forgiveness from you. They have confessed their sins. They have turned away from their sins. And they want the Savior to be their Savior tonight. Lord, I pray forgive them in Jesus' name. Jesus. Take the guilt of sin away. Take the penalty of the sin away. And take the powerlessness away, Lord. Let salvation come in now. This moment, grant them your salvation. Confirm it in their hearts for the peace and the joy of salvation. And the strength, the inner strength to now stand right and walk right. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Identify your problem. You lay one hand upon yourself and raise up the other hand for your miracle. And then we're going to pray. Remember that name has never failed. The name of Jesus will not fail tonight. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever the problem is, those blind eyes will open and see. The lame will rise up and walk. Deaf and dumb people will hear, they will speak. And any mountain that is swollen there will vanish away. Incurable disease, everything will go away. I'm sending the word of power to you now. Anointing that breaks, the yoke is coming upon you now. And when you hear the final amen, it's done. It is finished. Then you open your eyes. Lo and behold, the miracle has happened to you. And then you shout for joy. Are you there now? Raise up one hand. Lay the other hand where the problem is. Healing has come. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. We know you cannot fail. You have promised and you are going to do it. And we know that it is now. Healing is now. Deliverance is now. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that spirit of insanity come out in Jesus' name. All those things walking about in the body. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any swelling in their body. You said, I speak to the mountain and that mountain has to move. I command that swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Go it up, vanish away. Hunchback, vanish away. Elephantiasis, vanish away. Be healed in Jesus' name.
I pray for those who cannot breathe well. I'm asking Lord that the respiratory system will receive your divine touch right now. Asthma be healed in Jesus' name. Those who have any ania there, I command that ania vanish away in Jesus' name. I'll vanish away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that cancer patient be healed right now. Cancer will not kill you. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And he has come right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer cells dry up. Cancer cells dry up. Lord, I pray for those who have also. I pray your also be healed now in Jesus' name. It shall be, be healed in Jesus' name. Issue of blood dry up now in Jesus' name. Jesus. I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. Deaf ears be opened right now. Dumb tongues be loose right now. Hear clearly. Speak clearly. Lord, confirm it in their lives. I pray for those who are blind. The bandage of the devil that covers your sight. I remove that bandage right now. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. All the dim eyes are clear up right now. Any pain in your eyes be removed right now. I pray for those who have stroke. Those who have arthritis. Those who are paralyzed. Those who have one leg shorter than the other. I pray the power of God will touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Transformation. Strains. Come into your life right now. Lord, I pray for everyone now. To my right and to my left. At the back and in the front. Anywhere you are now. Receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Lord, let there be a confirmation for everyone. I thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. It is done. I said it is done. I said it is done. Check up yourself. You see the miracle right there. 